what's going on everybody? Inner Chaz Mand here and I'm back once again with another episode um, impression or just my overall thoughts on uh, uh, more of the Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, Amazon's uh, newest TV show. Um, I am uh, now, I just literally like minutes ago finished episode 6 and uh, I should say apologies, I never got around to covering episode 5 um, and kind of giving my thoughts on that. Uh, primary reason was because if you didn't know, I live in Southern Florida and uh, we have been going through a lot of hurricane preparation just for Hurricane Ian and just wanted to say quickly, you know, our thoughts go to all the people on the opposite coast. Um, you know, a lot of people over there got hit pretty hard. Um, you know, for us, fortunately, we didn't really see much, just some winds and some rain. But uh, yeah, you know, just um, yeah, really feel for the people over on the opposite side again. They they took a lot of the brunt of it. But um. Yeah, that's so. That's the primary reason I never got around to touch, touching on episode five. So I figured, why not? Let me just throw my couple of my early opinions, um, not early, but um, some of my late opinions on episode five. Um, this probably was my least favorite episode so far of the entire show. I really didn't think this episode delivered anything that was really super entertaining. What this episode I found really kind of built towards was kind of planting the seeds for what happens in the following episode which I just again just watched and uh, in my opinion that episode is much better than this one but uh, still I kind of wanted to touch on a couple of the scenes that I had saw um, from episode 5 um, for me not really much was entertaining um, it kind of starts off with the Harfoots and the stranger once again um, I actually really at the very beginning of this episode they put uh, What's her name? Oh, I forgot it already. Poppy. Poppy actually has sang a really good, sang a song, kind of like a traveling song for the Harfoots. And I actually found myself really enjoying her song. I thought it was pretty good. It, um, I don't want to say it was reminiscent or as good as like, um, uh, what was the song that was sang in, um, there was a song they sang in The Hobbit, which was really good. And there was also a song sang in, um, the original trilogy for, for uh, Return of the King, um, but it was pretty, it was pretty good. Like uh, that's one of the things that I really like about the Lord of the Rings kind of world, uh, all the Middle Earth stuff is a lot of the music. The music in this show has been absolutely fantastic. I've enjoyed just about every. I mean, I would say maybe the main theme is a little lackluster considering Howard Shore composed it, but for the most part, everything else is really quality and. Again, music is something I very much enjoyed. But uh, yeah, so the song I really enjoyed in this episode, we finally got to see the, uh, from what I understand. Um, but yeah, so, I don't know, we finally got to see more of these, uh, I think there are some sort of servants of Morgoth, from what I understand. So it's kind of curious as to what they're going to do with these guys and what exactly their motivations are. But we finally got to see uh, what people were calling was Slim Shady back before the show came out. A lot of people were worried because I remember they thought this person was going to be Sauron. But uh, luckily it is not. It's just, you know, just some sort of priest just to, to Morgoth. Um, and yes, we got to see them kind of interacting with that. Uh, we to, I remember this scene was more kind of character building for Adar just showing his kind of love and appreciation for the orcs um which i don't i don't know i don't so far i don't necessarily know if i love adar but i will say for me he's one of the more interesting characters so far i mean at least he it almost and almost in a way they've given him too much motivation especially leading in episode six but uh they've almost made him too likable because he's not really like intimidating like Sauron or anything, but yeah, he's a very um, kind of heartfelt character that you kind of understand. Again, you, they've gotten you, they've gotten us too too attached to him, I think. But um, yeah, so we got some of that. Um, we got some of Bronwyn kind of. Uh, oh, I remember this part. This was her kind of separating the crowd, trying to see who would stand and fight. And then the I don't remember that guy's name. I think he was a blacksmith or a uh, town. The, the guy that has the hilt and he's is Sauron heavy, I remember. But, um, yeah, I don't know when Bronwyn became, like, the leader, but I remember this episode of the episode prior. She's, like, like the leader of the entire group, which 
I mean, I guess someone has to lead, but I don't know. I didn't... I don't get, like, leader vibes from her, but... Oh, I mean, it's not that big a deal. But, uh, yeah, this guy ended up... Uh, I remember him. He ended up splitting up the group. And, uh... Because he, he tells some of them, Oh, well, if we give ourselves up, um, Sauron will take it easy on us. Half of the people kind of agreed with him and half go with him and half stay with Bronwyn to help fight. Um... Okay, um... We got more. I remember this uh, part. We got kind of a Sildor kind of begging with his dad, Elendil, to kind of allow him to join the fight. And I don't know. I was kind of iffy, iffy on it. I don't really. I don't particularly. I'll be honest. Again, the Numenor plotline is probably my least favorite. Going, you know, still going ahead, which again is incredibly disappointing considering it's Numenor <laughs> and the Numenorians. But yeah, I. I uh, Angry Joe kind of said it in his review of that this episode is like I think he said something like he's kind of rooting for the tidal wave which you know hey I, I can't necessarily argue with him uh, the tidal wave seems seems uh, seems like the right way to go <laughs> uh, we still got this continued plot line of, of the Lendil's daughter who I don't necessarily care for um, this is just kind of them getting Halbrand to kind of join in on their adventure to go over towards the Southlands. Um, continue on with the Hardfoots. Uh, trying to remember. Oh, we got some like, I don't know if they were wargs, but they were like boars of some sort. Who kind of attacked the Hardfoots as they're traveling along into like this kind of cursed. I think they were calling it like a possibly cursed land or something. The land that they had traveled before, but now it's barren of all sorts of um of life basically and they get saved by the stranger who does a was it like a hulk smash i think it was he like slams the ground and causes all of them to 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 get thrown aback but um yeah that was kind of cool i mean i think it was even more cool as afterwards i'll show you but he like by doing what he did he like damages his arm or something it turns kind of black and he tries to like ice it up and heal it um, oh my gosh, another, the next scene was really stupid. Um, we get Galad... Again, all I, I'm not a huge... Again, I'm not a huge deep um, Tolkien lore nerd. I, I just like the main trilogy of movies, the Peter Jackson. But from what I... You know, I do watch other content that other people uh, who are nerds talk about. So a lot of my information I kind of grab from them. But uh, often what I hear about is how amazing the fighters of Numenor are like you know the people say they're supposed to be super tall some of the greatest fighters in all the lands and and in this scene Galadriel takes on like four of them and you know just kind of uh she's kind of doing it more for sport or for teaching them or something and I don't know she's able to kind of fight off all four of them and I thought it was kind of stupid in my opinion um we had this scene where with Farazon and his son Kemen um, at least I think his son was Kemen, was it? Yep, Kemen, okay. Uh, we had seen with these two, or his son Kemen trying to talk him out of whatever he was doing to kind of work with, uh, the queen and trying to help with the elves, and the father was just like, oh, well, uh, I think the father, this guy, for reason from what I understand, plays a huge part in the lore, and he kind of, in this, is just kind of comes off as like a, like a racist against elves, and he was, talks about how he would never let the elves, or everything he does is just in the in the hope that like putting humans on the pedestal or man on the pedestal and not the elves. And I don't know if that goes against his character. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time this show does something that goes against uh, a character from the books. But um, oh yeah, so this scene right here, this was the the scene I was talking about where, um, gosh, all these characters trying to remember all the names. Uh, what's her nori so this is the scene where the stranger was kind of healing his arm with ice and he's kind of in a trance and nori comes up and is trying to you know i guess wake him up and she accidentally touches his arm and he, the the freeze you know gravitates over towards her and she breaks off and it flings her back um i guess it's just meant to just kind of you know show her kind of scared of him maybe he's more dangerous than they thought I think that was the only thing that was kind of uh, maybe referenced here. Um, we had a dinner scene. Uh, this was another great scene I actually really enjoyed with Durin and the elves. 
the, the was, there's a really funny part where like uh, Durin uh, makes it seem as though the table is worth or is like some sort of ancient uh, dwarven of some sort of make and I don't know he ends up like just convincing them that that he should take, he should take the table super funny haha <laughs> I know I'm, t I'm describing it bad once again I'm trying to blast through this episode because I'm trying to get over to episode 6 to me that was the more entertaining one essentially this whole scene right here is just meant to kind of be combative a little bit between uh, Durin and Galab Galabrand or Gilgalad did I say Galabrand? oh Gilgalad and um uh, gosh, there's so oh, Elrond. There's so many character names to like try and remember here. Um, but yeah, great scene. Um, kind of a cool thing that they do describe is um, they kind of uh, tell exactly how because um, Gilgalad basically know. I think Gilgalad kind of gives off that he knows about the um, the Mithril that is buried beneath that. Um, Durin is, you know, they're kind of cultivating and mining down below. So I think Gilgalad in this scene is just trying to get Elrond to, because he's friendly with Durin, he knows the elves. He's trying to get Elrond to kind of go and get the, um, get some of the Mithril, because essentially their, like, tree, their tree of light that, um, essentially gives life and gives power to the elves, um, that tree is basically dying um pretty much and i guess um this scene right here was actually really cool but it shows like an ancient battle of like an elf and a um oh gosh what are these things i for totally forgot it's um a balrog oh my gosh but a balrog is basically a like servant of morgoth or cre like early creations of morgoth from like the early battles and basically there was like a big big grand battle between them and due to their battle uh, a bunch of light is like shot underneath the tree and shot into like the, underneath the earth's surface and that er, that light basically is what um, creates the mithril somehow so basically the, the um, Gilgalad and uh, Elrond they want they need they don't want but they need the mithril to give light back into their tree that gives them their light so it's like a whole uh, kind of cycle or circle of them just kind of uh, needing to replenish their powers because if not they could die oh, and here's also a scene of um, of uh, Elrond kind of seeing how dying the tree is and kind of looking at it and it's all kind of black and veiny and kind of gross um, so yeah so that happens this scene is was just uh Gosh, sorry, dogs barking in the background. This scene was a sealed door just kind of begging his friends to let him go on their trip over to, or for that, because, you know, they were able to get into the kind of, uh, I want to say program, but they were able to get into kind of these soldiers, um, get into the military basically to allow them to go over to the Southlands to battle. And a sealed door, you know, is just kind of begging them to find a way to let him in. He eventually is successful with that. Um,. Oh, and Kamen eventually climbs onto a boat listening to um, Isildur's sister and, like, finds Isildur, who's actually trying to sneak his way onto the boat because they, they, they won't let him join. And Kamen finds him there. And this was... A, this ended up being a stupid plot point. But, like, they end up finding each other there. Kamen was trying to blow up the boat. Isildur notices what he's doing and at the last second Kamen blows up the boat and the two of them jump off at the last second which like in terms of like how it looks it's a really cool scene but I mean okay they have, I don't know this scene ends up being really dumb and they save each other they get off um, get off the boat and then I don't know this was an, uh, again this episode for me was really boring I should probably wrap it up I'm already like talking about it too long a lot longer than i thought i would but uh Celebrimbor here is just kind of consoling uh elrond talking about how he knew his you know he knew his father and stuff um let's see what's another good part to jump to oh this is the scene of the blacksmith i don't remember the pub guy the guy that had the sword hilt this is the scene of him 
uh, bringing all of their people that they decided to leave that tower in the Southlands. This is them finally getting to Adar. And then when they get there, they're expecting to be welcomed in, but Adar, because he's a bad guy, I mean, what else would he do? But uh, he essentially tells them, you must kill the young man in order for you to become one of us. And that happens. <laughs> he kills the guy. Uh, this is them kind of getting prepared for their battle. And this is honestly one of the better scenes as well, I felt like, was Elrond and uh, Durin. And again, like the writing, for some reason, the writing with this storyline is like great, which is kind of odd. I don't know why like the writing in certain parts is iffy and then good in other places, but the writing and all the dialogue sections between Durin and Elrond are really good. Um, uh, especially here, like uh, this is a great scene where like Elrond is just kind of tech telling him that, you know, uh, he's kind of walking around the main points, but then at the end he kind of has to be open up front with his friend and be like, listen, I, I know I, to I told you all of these things, but we need the Mithril because it'll save our entire peoples. And he kind of like gently tells him that like uh, the entire race of elves is in your hands, Durin. It's all up to you. We're counting on you. And uh, which is a great thing to do because, you know, uh, in a way, the elves and dwarves have always kind of been combative in a way and haven't really been communicative and they definitely don't work together in any ways. Uh, and, the, and I guess there's always been a sense that like elves are like the highest race, not like racially. I'm not quite sure if that fits in, but just because they're so mystical and they're, um, I don't know, but you, you get what I'm saying. But um, it is a great thing to do because it, it, it definitely he's giving the power to do and he's just saying like, listen, we're counting on you. You know, it's all up to you whether we continue or, or don't. And Durin, you know, being a fantastic friend ends up, you know, he's just like, all right, well, let's go see what my father has to say. And um, it was cool. I really enjoyed the scene. At the end of the scene, you can see uh, Gilgalad, who's kind of watching over their, uh, their conversation, being, being a creeper, kind of looking in on what they're doing. And then this episode, oh, that's right. The episode comes to an end, which is oh, something here that really bothered me, but... um. The episode comes to an end with the queen and uh, the f the forces of Numenor deciding to head to the Southlands and join the battle. The scene is so it's so dumb though because leading into episode six, they'll talk about it again. But only three ships leave to go to Middle Earth to the Southlands to help. Like, who is that going to help? And uh, again, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, get angry, but like this was really, it's really cool visually. But when you really think about it, it's like, wow, that's really stupid. <laughs> that, that like the Numenorians supposed to be like this big grand military and great warriors. They only sent three ships. I mean, I know one just blew up, but come on, they got, they're supposed to be like great craftsmen, great military force. It's like, what are three ships? What exactly is that gonna help? I don't know. All right, so let me switch on over. I'm going to move over to the episode six. But once again, episode five, honestly, for me, was not a great episode. I feel like it was probably my uh, my least favorite. I don't say probably. It was my least favorite episode of the show so far. But um, yeah, let's just go on. Let's move on to episode six. I feel like I'm going to talk much longer about this one than episode five. Um, luckily, episode six was much, much better. Um, there's still a lot of problems I have with it, but at least they're starting to get more into battles, more into the war. So at least visually it's a little more entertaining and I don't know, at least the stakes feel like they're ra ramping up a little bit. Uh, I, I definitely have some notes here as to what exactly my, my problems and questions are though with, with this section, but let's go ahead and deep dive. So... Here we have Adar just kind of building up the battle, um, which is kind of nice. It's, it's kind of nice to see some sort of... Uh, oh, I should probably switch over. I keep forgetting to do that. Uh, again, it's kind of nice to at least see some war, some sort of battle or something happening. Um, uh, I would say this whole beginning section might be my favorite 
of this episode. Um, what happens is that Adar kind of leads the forces up to this tower because they are going to, they want that hilt. They want to kind of kill all the humans and take that hilt. Now, this is so stupid. Again, I'm saying, I'm saying this is stupid again. Militarily, this is really dumb. Why is Adar at the front of the battle lines in what in what is like expected to be like a really big war? Like that just seems like bad military strategy that your commander would be at the front of your battle lines. I don't know. Once again, that's just me being picky. Um, kind of just seeing him. I don't know. At the very front, I was just like, he's quite out in the open. He should be easy to take out. Uh, I mean. I really do wonder if, if, um, gosh, I forgot his name again. Um, oh, uh, Adon Deer. If Adon, like, if Adon Deer had been, like, right at the top of the tower and it just killed Adar from where he was, would the rest of the, the, the orc forces just flee? Because they're just following what he's doing. I mean, I don't know. That's just me being, me being annoying, I think. So what ends up being really cool with this kind of uh, mild little battle scene is um, Adondir, as, as they're starting to flood into the, the kind of tower, kind of grounds area, they have like this really cool plan where um, using some of his arrows, he's able to like bring down the tower because they all kind of flee outside. Um, or all, they, they, they kind of just empty out the place and they exit out kind of through the back door. But um, there's a, just a really cool battle sequence of them kind of bringing down this tower and uh trying to see if i can so you can kind of see in the background though as they also bring down the tower and as they bring down the tower the tower like kind of creates like a landslide going down and that kind of takes out all the other orcs um really cool scene i i really enjoyed i'm like as it moves on though you kind of see that adar survives which i'm not quite sure exactly how that happened but um i don't know so we kind of move on to another scene of I hated this scene, just kind of Galadriel kind of talking with uh, Isildur, stupid, I'm not even going to talk about it, they kind of just talk about, I don't know, his futures and all that other stuff. Um, and then Elendil kind of comes in. Again, I'm just not interested in any of the Numenor stuff, I feel like honestly, it's some of my, like, I'm, some of the stuff I'm the least interested in, which is still really sad considering. Um, this is another thing I don't quite understand, but why, why did the Numenorians like bring the queen along with them on their battle? Like that seems so, that just doesn't make sense. Like why, why would you let your queen kind of dip out on their, on your kingdom for a battle? And then if you do take the queen somewhere, why do you only have three ships? Such a small military force. I don't know. There, there's there's a lot of inconsistencies with the show so far. Um, I think that again, I've said it before, but the writing is good in some places and it's really bad in other places. And it, I don't really see much in terms of strategy, in terms of military wise. But I don't know. I guess the queen just really wanted to go. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So again, is it's just prep work for the battle. Um, what ends up happening is the orcs, because when I first, it's weird, because at first I thought these orcs that were, that were passing by their town, I thought they were the remaining orcs from that landslide battle, but I think these were, this was like a separate regiment or a separate, um, military force, and as they're going by, uh, they get like brutally massacred by Adondir and the humans, and, um, they believe they've won... But what ends, up, what ends up happening is a um, the, the people that they slaughter ends up not being orcs. What they end up being are humans dressed up as orcs. Um, but uh, what, ends up, what ends up happening is that there's a the actual Eddar and his actual forces are in like the trees and end up coming out of nowhere and begin to attack. Um, now here we had that fight scene between Eddar and Deer and some big orc who for some reason didn't have any weapons on them but okay but here is what i'm talking about what happens is the military force in the trees uh ends up hitting bronwyn and killing many of the people and then they all take shelter inside of their main town sh townhouse kind of thing um and somehow they're able to like 
Uh, Bronwyn is like gravely wounded and she's like gushing blood. And somehow they're using some of her like kind of uh, medicinal know-how. They're able to kind of heal her up, which I'll be honest, this scene felt kind of weird considering there was like Adar and the millet and the other orcs were like outside trying to get in and while they're doing that, they're like over here working on this lady. I don't, I don't know. It, it just felt kind of out of place. I felt like considering what was happening. Um, so yeah, they're able to heal her. Um, Adar begins to kind of uh, get into the building with his other orcs, and this is something else that was. Oh my gosh, it's. I'm telling you, there's some things that are so just timely and so. Um, I don't know, it just the writing's odd. And uh, so this force of um, uh, uh, of the Numenorians kind of, uh, once they make landfall, they begin immediately, they somehow in this entire grand world, this entire la land mass area, they know exactly where Adondir and the other ones are being attacked. Or they know exactly where the, the orc forces are at. So yeah, as uh, Adon Deer's getting ready to do his thing, he somehow get, gets the hilt, or he's he begins killing humans, telling Adon Deer, "Give me your. This is all because of you." Um, which ends up being, being it, there's so many questions I have here. Earlier in this episode, Adon Deer says he's gonna go hide the hilt um, from everyone. He's not even gonna tell Bronwyn. And like, but there's there's still so many questions like. And what what ends up happening is, is as as um, Bronwyn is kind of you know sitting on the table, Adar says, "Listen, if you don't give me the hilt, I'm going to kill her." And her son Theo ends up giving up and saying, "Okay, I'll give you the hilt." But there's so many problems. Like, first off, earlier in the episode, Adon Deer says he's going to go hide it, and he doesn't tell anyone. So we're just going to assume that Theo somehow saw where he hit he hid the hilt. And, I, again, it's, it's so, I don't know, it, it's convenient. It's very convenient, like, how some of these things happen. Um, so, and Adar ends up getting the, getting the sword hilt, but before he's able to, like, kill everyone that's there, the Numenorians decide to show up at the exact same, you know, the exact perfect time, and they kind of started you know all of the normally start attacking the orcs and what's that what ends up happening here again is galadriel decides or she sees the orc the orc she sees um adar and begins chasing him out into the woods um it is kind of a decent scene you kind of see uh you know she does some of her elvish ways and gets her horse to run especially fast what ends up being very questionable again though is at the end of this chase how brand ends up being there and it's like just like dude how, how did he know so he so not only <coughs> so not only did he know exactly where they were going to end up but he was able to get there before them and they were like way ahead of him i don't know it's it's just kind of odd and in this scene how brand is uh um has adar in a compromising position and he already stabbed him in the hand because he was going for the for the hilt. And Halbran, before he's able to like kill Adar, he's stopped by uh, Galadriel. And um, and it, it's just very odd. I think what they're definitely building towards is Halbrand is some form of Sauron. I, I don't think there's any question. Like Halbrand just like such a questionable character. And um, and especially I'll, I'll mention it here. Especially, there's a scene after this where Adar literally, like, looks at Halbrand and is like, Who are you? Like, and not just, like, in, like, a, in, like, a, like, a super basic way. He, I think he's, like, looking deep into Halbrand and he's like, No. I think he's like, What are you? Like, that's my opinion. He doesn't say what. He says, Who are you? But it seems like a very deep, Who are you? Like, like, he's actually asking, like, What are you? Where'd you come from? Um, so yeah, they kind of, that kind of happens. Uh, oh, this scene right here with Galadriel kind of, uh, um, interrogating 
Adar kind of trying to figure out who we were, where Sauron is, who does he work for. Um, and this scene creates another problem, though, that I will say for the show is they really demonize Galadriel here. Like, um, it's, it's so bad. Like, Galadriel is like, one, they've kind of turned her racist against orcs. They've said that, or she even openly says, I'm going to torture you. I'm going to torture your orcs. I'm going to put them out in the sun. You should see, because she's trying to get information, but like, I think she's like serious about all these things. And then she like openly states that she was going to let him live and kill all of his orc children and all the other orcs. And, and cause she wants him to see all of their deaths. And it's like, she's like, I will not stop until all of your kind is dot is dead. And it's like, Whoa. Okay. Uh, you know, tyrant, like, she, she literally wants to kill, like, everything. And it's just, like, very odd. It's very odd how they've kind of painted Galadriel. She's very, she's just, like, super evil. And I don't know why they went in this direction with the character, but... Okay, you know. Um, and then after this, or... She, a lot of the conversation kind of goes that she just thinks he's tied to Sauron in some way. And he ends up saying, I'm not tied to Sauron. Everything I'm doing is anti-Sauron because Sauron was doing experiments and was killing many orcs or was having him do it because Sauron was performing experiments of some sort. Um, and then he ends up saying that he actually killed Sauron, which I question if that happened or not, but he says it does. Um, I actually, I read or I listened to Angry Joe's uh, impression of this video, this episode as well. And Angry Joe actually had an interesting theory that uh, in their conversation, Adar, or Adar actually says that when he killed Sauron, he split him. And Angry Joe, I remember saying, has an interesting theory where he thinks, um, he thinks Adar split him into two. And he thinks that Halbrand is half of the two. So that's why Adar at this end of the scene asks Halbrand, who are you? Um, so that's an interesting theory. I mean, I guess the other thing you'd have to think about when it comes to that theory is who is the, or what is the other half of Sauron, if that's the case? Um, I would assume the easiest assumption would be half of him is Halbrand and half of him is the stranger over with the uh, Harfoots. But um, I don't know. That'd be a That'd be a weird thing to do. I would almost prefer Halbrand is just full on Sauron, maybe in hiding, but interesting. This is a theory I figured I'd bring up that I, I saw Angry Joe kind of uh, introduce. Um, so yeah, once again at the end, Galadriel is about to kill him and Halbrand shows up and then Halbrand saves him. Um, and then that's the whole like, who are you scene. Um, ba -ba -ba. What else we got here? We kind of had some like mild celebrating between all of the peoples as for like what happened at the end of the war but dun 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 you'll never guess what happened uh theo decides to oh my voice just broke <laughs> where is it i can't bring it up oh theo decides to open up the hilt to kind of get a good look because um adandir tells him you know be strong give it up and give it to the numenorians but as Theo opens it up, dun, 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 it is not the hilt. It is an axe somehow. And uh, I don't know. It's really dumb. It's dumb. It's like this whole time, like all of your like smart people never thought to open up the, the bag over the hilt to take a look at it. No one thought about checking on the sword. No one at all. No, nobody. Uh, again, it's all very convenient. But so what ends up happening is that the blacksmith or whatever his name was the old man the old sauron follower he actually somehow got the hilt takes it over to the shrine of sauron puts it in it turns it and in another annoying fashion uh we kind of learn what the actual hilt um what its actual purpose is if i can pull it up perfectly E. 
Anyways, but what the actual purpose of the hilt for some reason ends up being is all it does is it controls a dam. And it, it opens up the dam, um, releasing water, you know, into the valley. And then the water goes into all of those holes that the orcs had created underground. And underground, and the trenches that also those uh, prisoners are in the first few episodes were in. But what ends up happening is all of that water filters in to underneath the mountain, or the kind of sleeping volcano that is uh, under, kind of, you know, at the, at the summit of everything. Uh, and if I can find it. Yeah, right here. So as you can see, that trench kind of goes down all up into the mountain. And the water kind of flows underneath, starts hitting the molten lava. Obviously, water and cold hitting to coming together creates a disruption. Therefore, shooting lava, volcano erupts. Oh no, everyone's going to die. Uh, and Galadriel, being the only cool one, decides to walk into the smoldering smoke and lava that literally is how the episode ends like everything was super kind of cool and then this happened and i was like Ugh. it's like how does galadriel survive molten ash and lava i don't know um but i will say even though i've been complaining a lot about this episode it at least was the most entertaining episode maybe so far than the first two i actually re I will forever say i actually still very much enjoyed episodes one and two Everything else after that, though, has been kind of... Man, this is probably one of the better ones as, as well. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of where things end. We, it seems like everything's going to be going downhill from here. I also heard some I heard some theories that... I mean, again, I don't know the locations very well for Middle-Earth, but does this volcano erupting, does this create some sort of realm that we know in the future... Lord of the Rings trilogy is like, does it create like Mordor or, or something? I don't know. Again, that'd be something in the comments, people who are super lore nerds, I'd love to hear about. But um, yeah, I guess kind of overall, I still think this show has a bunch of incons inconsistencies. They've kind of dropped the ball on a f couple characters. I'm at least happy it's a little bit more entertaining. Hopefully they can continue on with that. Although I have a, f I have a feeling this next episode is going to be heavy... Harfoots uh, oriented. It's going to be a lot of Nori, a lot of the Stranger. Maybe we'll see more of Durin and Elrond, which, again, those guys I like. But, um, I don't know. We'll see. I'm, this show is lucky that somebody like me is a super Lord of the Rings fan. Because, like, I'll be honest, if I wasn't a fan of this source material, or I should rephrase that. This is not, this does not seem very close to the source material. But if I was not a fan of the Lord of the Rings name in general, I may not be super into the show. But I'm kind of into it, just kind of curious as to where it goes. This show hasn't dropped the ball as hard as like the Lord, the Halo TV show. That show, that one season killed any desire I have to see any more of that. That can go away. This I'm at least like, I'm on a string, just kind of holding on for dear life, kind of just wanting to see where it goes. But uh, yeah, anyways, guys, um, what did you think of episodes five and six? I'd love to hear down in the comments. I'd love to hear if you guys like it more than me. I'd love to hear if you hated it more than me. Please let me know why or why not. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. Or I should probably switch back over. Anyways, um, thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. I hope to see. Hopefully, you can join me on another episode. Um, I'm very, still very curious to see where this is going. Um, but yeah, I love you. And I will see you guys again on the next uh, Enter Chasman. Thank you so much for joining. Bye, guys. Hey, now. I see you made it through the video and liked or even possibly loved it. Well, if you want to see any more additional content or you'd like to get into contact with me, consider checking out some of my social medias right here. And if you'd like to go above and beyond and want to support my channel monetarily, here is also a couple places where you can do so. And if nothing else, simply liking, sharing, and subscribing would make me the happiest Chaz man on the planet.